Welcome back to the SSL Family Dad channel. Today we are going to make a reverse osmosis system for processing maple sap before we boil it into maple syrup. I will be doing this with some new parts and a lot of old fittings and things that I have lying around. So just as always, you never know what's going to happen. I'm going to dig through all my fittings and things and see what I can come up with. So first I'm going to tell you what this is going to be used for and uh, then we will get it put together and we will put it to the test. Okay, so I have collected about 25 gallons of sap. I have probably another 20 gallons or 25 gallons out on the trees that I will get a little bit later. I have a 55 gallon drum. This is what I normally collect everything in and I also bought this new Rubbermaid tote. This will turn into about a half a gallon of syrup, but I have to boil all the water off and be left with some of the sugar. That's what I want. I want sugar and a very little bit of water. So about 66% sugar is what I want in the end. But what we start with is about one or two, maybe 3% sugar if we get it at the right time. Normally what we do is uh, every year I have done this, we, we boil, right? So I have a pan, I build various evaporators out of cinder blocks or other things, and uh, we start a fire, we burn a bunch of wood, and we evaporate all the water away, and we are left with a concentrated sugary syrup that is delicious and wonderful. And of course, only the best is made here in Michigan. What a reverse osmosis system does is reduces the amount of boil time that I have. So what we wanna do is, is separate out as much of the water we, as we can mechanically using filtration in a system called reverse osmosis to uh, reduce the amount of boiling. It reduces the amount of wood collection and energy and time spent processing sap into syrup. Reverse osmosis is not gonna remove all of the water. It's gonna remove some of it and you can actually run it through several times or through several reverse osmosis filters in order to process it a little bit further down. This is my first time using reverse osmosis in my systems. Normally I just normally I just boil and, uh, and get it all down, but I'd like to uh, uh, be a little more efficient and uh, save some time. So I'm gonna start by just digging some things out and starting to put a few things together. And uh, then I will show you kind of the plan once I have a plan. <laughs> this is where we're at at this point. <laughs> this is a lot of bins filled with fittings that I have been digging through. Uh, to try to find just the right pieces without going to the store. But I actually think I spent more money using what I have than what if, if I would have just gone to the store. I have an RV pump here. Uh, I think this work, it's 12 volt pump, so I can power it from any of my little battery uh, power units or car battery or solar or whatever. I've got PEX fittings on here. So these are half inch threaded fittings on each side of this. I've got half inch PEX I'm gonna run. This will go to our barrel full of sap. This will pump the liquid through. I've got uh, conversion to half inch PEX here. We go half inch PEX, we go up to three quarter, three quarter inch PEX, up to one inch PEX. And then we have a three quarter by one inch adapter that adapts to our first housing, which is a sediment filter. This is a SimPure sediment filter and a membrane solutions membrane. This is a, uh, a string wound, and this is all this is for is just gonna, it's gonna force through the liquid here and it's gonna catch debris, bugs, sticks, you know, sometimes spiders or ants get in there, you know, uh, anything like that, little twigs and pieces of dirt and, and all the big stuff. So this is a pre-filter and it is a five micron rating in this, in either one of these, these are both five micron. This is a, a wound string and this is more like a, a fabric. Um, and they're all food grade polypropylene uh, filters. This canister is our sediment filter. So this is where it gets a little wild. Um, I found a bunch of brass, brass fittings actually these were sent to me a long time ago in our when we did our pool heater. We did a, a wood burning pool heater out of a 55 gallon drum and a follower, um, I can't remember his name, maybe Jeff, uh, sent a box. He was a plumber. He had a bunch of, of um, spare parts and pieces and I have been hauling them around from house to house. This is finally getting put to use. A real nice liquid filled gauge. Look at that. Look at that gauge. Isn't that beautiful? The oil filled gauge that won't freeze. And uh, this is real nice. So we're gonna use this. And I, I cobbled together a bunch of fittings because I had thought that this was all quarter inch, but actually the adapter here is 3 8 inch on the top of the reverse osmosis filter membrane housing. And then the bottom is quarter inch coming out. So I bought all kinds of quarter inch valves and quarter inch pieces and bits and all this stuff. And, uh, and tubing, and then when I went to put it together, it wasn't the right size. So I hobbled together a bunch of, uh, of these fittings going from a three quarter inch uh, bell reducer, half inch, half inch T. We're going up to half inch to three eighths inch, three eighths inch threaded. And then out this side, we've got a uh, threaded street 90 half inch to a half inch uh, bushing down to three eighths inch and three eighths inch to 
or maybe that's quarter inch to three eighths inch. And then this is the three inch nipple that's gonna plug into the top. So it looks kind of crazy. It's gonna work, I'm pretty sure. Well, I'm gonna put the rest of this together. Uh, we're gonna mount this all up and we'll get it hooked up and, and put it to the test and see what we can do. Oh, and I didn't explain, but uh, I have these little connectors. I can't remember the name of them. Um, I'll put a link in the description of these if you want to use them. But I just threw, I actually cut the, the end off of a little 12-volt uh, charging cable that I had, an accessory cable. And so I'm going to use this to power the 12-volt RV pump off of one of my little power centers here. I don't want to burn this pump up, so we'll see how well it self-primes here. I knew there was a reason why I thought this pump might be bad. It definitely is. Sometimes you save things and it works out. Sometimes you save things and it doesn't. So I got a new pump. It's actually been a couple days. I have a new RV pump uh, to put in here. So I'm gonna pop that in. I do not know if the RV pump is actually gonna work. They're cheap, and but they're not really meant for continuous use, continuous running for hours and hours and hours. So it might burn it up. Uh, also the kind of pressure it's under and other things. I don't know how well it's going to work. So we're going to find out uh, what happens and if you can use a cheap RV pump. And if you can't, then I'm going to have to buy the more expensive reverse osmosis booster pumps, which are like a hundred bucks instead of 40 or 50. So experiments, let's find out what happens. Trial number two. I'm gonna put both my discharge tubes into the bucket. Well, so far it's working perfectly. So the RV pump is, uh, seems to be not getting hot or anything. So that's good. It did come with a pre-filter, which I thought was really cool. So I'm just letting this run through. It says the discard the first five gallons that you run through this thing. So I'm just running this, letting this circulate just to kind of clear out any of the synthetic, you know, stuff that's in the pre-filter or the uh, reverse osmosis filter. But it looks like we're, uh, Holding that about 30 PSI. I think this will kick up to 40 PSI and then it actually 
turns off it has, it has its own pressure switch oops that's not good so we'll let this uh run for a little while and then we'll shut it off and it looks like we're pulling about 60 70 watts All right, we are ready to start filtering the reverse osmosis system. So what is gonna happen is this clear tube right here is gonna be the concentrated sap. This blue tube right here is gonna be pure water that I don't want. So right now I'm just gonna discard that pure water into this, uh, this tote. This tote can hold, I think, 10 or 15 gallons. So the concentrated sap is gonna cycle back into the barrel. So I'm gonna run it through this a couple times. It's gonna keep kind of cycling through there and keep removing a little bit more water off of it each time it goes through. And so I'll this run just as long as, uh, as long as I want, I guess. I'll let it run for a few hours here. Uh, that should run it through a couple times. And then I'm gonna be adding some fresh sap to the barrel today. Uh, and so we'll see how, if we can reduce this. I might, my goal would be to reduce the, you know, pull maybe 60, maybe, I don't know, maybe 40% of the water out of here. That would be ideal. I'm really glad that this new pump came with the uh, pre-filter on it as well, because that's gonna help my sediment filter last longer. So so I have it hooked up to the, the Rock Pals right now, just on the cigarette lighter um, attachment or plug. And then I also have it, it's charging. So basically I'm just using this as a DC converter. Eventually this whole system will be out at a sugar shack that will be powered by solar panels and all that stuff. And so I'll be able to use my accessory hookup on my battery bank to power it. I did have a little leak here too that I did fix. I just had to tighten that up a little bit. There's our pure water. And then there's our concentrate going back in the barrel. Well, it's been running for a little while. Let's turn it off. It's loud. It's been working good. So we have, uh, this is all of our pure water that we've taken out. So we've already gotten, uh, I would say probably five gallons of water out of the, uh, of the barrel. And so we're just continuing to make this more and more concentrated. So we'll do this a few more times tonight. I'd like to get maybe, you know, this whole thing filled up, which I think is 15 gallons. So we're taking 15 gallons of water out of uh, about 40 gallons of sap. That's pretty good. That's saving a lot of boiling time. This thing has been working really well, a lot better than I thought. So we're pulling off all that water. We're concentrating our sap. We're saving a ton of energy, a ton of wood. I will expand this system for next year and hopefully I can get my sugar shack built. So stay tuned for, uh, for those projects coming up. I will put links in the description to everything that I used here, the SimPure uh, housing and all the membrane solutions, all the filters that I have, the reverse osmosis system filters and even the gauge and all that stuff, the stuff that I bought off Amazon. You can do this much cheaper if you use uh, different types of tubing <laughs> instead of PEX and all that stuff. I use a lot of expensive tubing here just because I had it laid around, but you can do this a lot cheaper with just some real cheap fittings from Home Depot or Ace Hardware. Uh, and some uh, quarter inch or uh, three eighths inch tubing. Don't forget to hit a thumbs up on today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. And as always guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one.